Fit like YouTube, welcome back to another episode of World's End. Okay, time to increase the flow, so I've picked up this new Vortec MP40 and I'm going to stick it right there. Switch the skimmer off. This thing up on the clean. But we can hear the seawall of sponges. It's just absolutely full of sponges everywhere. And you think it's detritus, but it's not. It's just loads and loads of pineapple sponges everywhere. They're just like a plague, man. So, Things really work, right? Usually just change this every four days. I've got a heap, quite a lot of them pre cut, so it's just a case of swapping them over. And there's not, there's not any detritus in here, it's just all sponges, millions of sponges. It's just crazy. But I really, I really don't like this sump. So, when I get time, I plan on taking this whole sump out, stripping it to the bare bones, and redesigning this. Because um, I'm just not happy with the way it is. That's not very efficient for what I want. 
I don't particularly like this baffle because there's no flow coming th through here. Everything just goes over there and then goes down. So it leaves this chamber a wee bit of stagnant. Um, and obviously I don't want to put a pump in there. And then have even more sponge going up into the display. But yeah, it's pretty bad with the sponges. So, I think what I'll do is when I'm doing my next water change, I'll siphon out as much of this sponge as I can and just replace this water and then see how that goes. Right, first things first, I need to get this skimmer empty. So, skimmer's now cleaned, and I'm not even going to tell you how bad that smell. That was absolutely disgusting. But if your skimmer doesn't stink, then it ain't working properly. <laughs> right. oh, it's going to be tricky trying to do this with one hand, like. So, that's all the sponges been removed. Well, got as much out as I could. It's looking a million times better than it was. So, some's clean. Most of the sponges have been removed, still some in the back there, not too much though. Alright, so that's a job that I've been putting off and putting off, but glad it's all done now. Um, but wonder how long it'll be before it fills up with those sponges again. They're a blooming nightmare. Uh, I was on the uh, Reef Bum live stream the other week and uh, he had Julian Sprung and Charles on as his hosts. I m managed, I was up late that night. First time ever catching a live stream and I thought why not ask the experts and they were a wee bit puzzled as to what pineapple sponges were. I think they must call them different things over in America. I think they called them glass sponges over there. Um, and the recommendation was to get a starfish. Um, so I'm going to try and source one of those starfish that might help eat as sponges. I'm not one to add any angel fish. Um, I know they would probably eat it, but yeah, I've got the swallowtail angel in here, and that's the only angel I'm going to have. So, as often is the case in this hobby, you do one thing and something else happens. <laughs> Cause and effect, eh? So, like I said in the previous episode, I think uh, use that flatworm exit by Sulphur. Certainly removed all the flatworms. However, what's kicked in its place is uh, cyanobacteria. And like I said, I've lost quite a lot of those early frags that I put in. I think this was due to the salifer flatworm exit treatment plus 
dip in the corals. Uh, I think we just stressed out too much. So that was unfortunate. However, the new ones, they're doing good. So far, so good anyway. And the four that have survived are looking okay, with the exception of this one here. It does look like it's bleaching. Uh, other thing that I've noticed is because, well, I don't know if it is because of the sponges, which just allow detritus to build up around them all the time. We're starting to get some hair algae growing in amongst the rocks, which is not good at all. And the other reason I think we're getting this now is uh, about a month ago, my phosphate levels were like 0 0.6. That's 0 0.6, not 0 0.6. And as you know, there seems to be a bit of a lag in your reef tanks. So your tank's looking good now, but my tank was looking pretty good back then, a month ago. And there's always like a, it's usually like a four week lag, I reckon. So whatever your parameters are now, it might not show for four weeks. So I suspect this algae showing up now is the lag catching up with itself. Tested my phosphate today and my phosphate level is 0 0.06. Which is ideal. I'm happy with that. So hopefully another month's time all that algae will disappear and hopefully the cyano will disappear. I'm not going to use any treatment uh, chemically or anything like that because I'll use that and then something else will probably just move into its place. So I'm just going to leave it unless it absolutely takes over the whole tank, a whole sand bed, then I might be forced to, but unless that happens, not I'm not doing it. The one thing I've noticed today is right in this far corner, if you can see them, we've got a little Asterina starfish. Now, I know a lot of people don't like the Asterina starfish. I'm not really a big fan either, but I had them in Dead Man's Chest, and you know what? They weren't too bad. I mean, they did grow to a fair size. Some of them were like the size of a 10 pence piece. But they never bothered any of the corals, and all they did was just graze on the algae, which I think that's the same one. So I might leave them. I might take them out, I'm not sure yet. What do you guys reckon? You reckon I should leave them in or take them out? What's your thoughts on Asterina starfish? Leave a comment below. Okay, so I think that's it for this episode. So thank you for watching. Please take the time to leave a like if you liked it. Dislike if you disliked it. And until the next one, happy reefing. Bye-bye.